Welcome back. We're at 1 Samuel 17, verses 48 to 51. Now, now they meet in battle. Let's just read it. So it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone, and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword, and drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. So yes, this is kind of a grim moment, isn't it? Uh, maybe the bedtime story didn't really emphasize, when they put this in the bedtime story, didn't really emphasize that David's David has uh, taken this rather heavy head of the Philistine off of his shoulders, but that's what happens. There's something interesting here in that David hurries, David runs toward the Philistine. The Philistine feels like, this guy's coming at me with sticks, this is going to be over in a second. Well, it was over pretty quick, wasn't it? Because when David did the sling, when David hit him with the stone, David goes and finishes the task by beheading. Did you notice that David was running toward the army? The Philistine was standing in front of the Philistine army. And David is running towards them, and the impossible happens. Everybody sees it. And that just goes to show you again that when God wants there to be a deliverance, God will provide the deliverance. And David had to be willing to run toward the enemy. He had to be willing to run in the direction the Lord sent him. He had to be willing to go out there and to run toward the, the, the whole Philistine army. He kind of ran toward the fire, so to speak, right? He ran toward the battle. He ran into the battle. That morning he was delivering cheese and, and wheat. There he was there very soon, actually in the battle. When things seem impossible, it just means we haven't processed it by faith. When things seem impossible, it's because we are looking through eyes that are not able, not perhaps not willing, not not bold enough eyes to see. May God give us eyes that are bold, bold eyes, so that we can actually see what God wants to do. David could see beyond the obvious to what God wanted to do. And so the lesson for us, you can slay a giant with a little stone if that's what God wants you to do. Whatever it is, if that's what God wants you to do, simply act out your faith by doing something about it, and God will be with us. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the victory that David had over Goliath. Thank you that David could see beyond the obvious. We, perhaps, are weak in seeing beyond the obvious. Your church today needs to be stronger in seeing beyond the natural, seeing beyond what appearances show. Well, the appearances show if the government comes out with the rule, we all just have to comply. We have to just bend down and just comply and do what we're told. Not necessarily. David did not just comply, David went straight on. So Lord, help be our helper. Help us to be courageous. We're in an age that needs courage, an age that needs boldness. Be our deliverer and may we be your servants. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. God will deliver us against the most mighty force, if that's his purpose. But he's looking for a few, a few people who will be willing to be people who will act out what they believe, who will put it into practice what they believe in the face of insurmountable odds. And the Bible's filled with those kind of stories. And yet those are not just Bible stories. Those should be the story of your life and mine today. May it be so. God be with you.